afternoon, everybody. It is Monday, March 7th, 2022 at 5 p.m. And I'll call to order the Freetown Forest Selection meeting. Um, we will be going to executive session and then returning back into open session. We will be going into executive session for the following three reasons. Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to litigation. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, and I do, Excel Recycling, LLC versus the Town of Freetown. Next reason is uh, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 22G2, 20, upon request by any person to inspect or copy the minutes of an executive session or any portion thereof, the body shall respond to the request within 10 days following receipt and shall release any such minutes uh, not covered by an exemption under subsection F, provided, however, that the um, body has not performed a review pursuant to paragraph one, the public body shall perform the review and release the non-exempt minutes uh, or any portion thereof, not later than the next body's meeting or 30 days, whichever first occurs. A public body shall not assess a fee for the time spent in this review. And third reason is Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to the collective bargaining with the Freetown Police Association and Public Employees Union Local 1144 Liana Clerical slash Library Union because a open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining position of the public body and the chair so declares, and I do. So with that, um, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Selectman Dager? Yes. Selectman Grunwald? Yep. Selectman Matthews? Yes. We are now, we have returned from executive session, are now back in open session. Um, so first we're gonna do personnel board. So George, I'll kick it over to you. Okay. All right. Uh, first item is uh, attend the appointment of Chief Gary Selby on the building committee, effective 2-16-22. I'll just go through them and we can take one vote, okay? Okay. Uh, rescind the appointment of Selectman George Grumwald to the Regional School Finance Committee, effective 3722. Uh, I think we'll hold on six yeah. and come back to that. Okay. Uh, approve the following appointments Jessica M. Corre as part time signal operator, trainee, effective 3722. Approve the uh, Elza M. Hay as part time signal operator, trainee. Effective 3-7-2022. Uh, I think are we appointing Harry Ashley? Yeah? Harry Ashley. Looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll appoint Harry Ashley Jr. to building committee, fire department representative, effective 2-16-22 through 6 30 uh, I think we'll have to come back to six and eight. So I want to just vote yeah. on those. Yeah. So, uh, can I have a motion to vote on uh, the appointments? I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Uh, six. Six, yeah. Six. Okay. So, who wants to be in the regional school? Point, uh, one selectman to the regional school finance committee. Any volunteers? <laughs> what do you think, Jared? Do you want to be it or do you want me to take it? If you're on, if you're on the, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. It's no problem. So that would have, in a way, it's two different high school. Right? Yeah, that makes sense. So point Trevor. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, you can pass on the eight for now if you want on to. Uh, yeah, I think we're actually. Pass over eight and nine, right? So we don't need to discuss that today. I think you can you take eight out of order and maybe discuss it when we're discussing the bolt ramp and that because it's going to be sort of part of that. Discussion. Okay. So maybe we'll kick that down to, and we'll talk about that when we speak. Kick it down to what? The boat ramp. Because we have the bolt ramp. So she's saying that that kind of coincides with the bolt ramp. So it's bolt ramp. Okay. Ramp. Okay. Which makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number nine. Vote on public uh, employee union local one one four four. No, that, that's that's one. That's one. We're, gonna, we're gonna kick that too. So I think I'll, it's back to me now. Okay. All right. Thank you, George. Okay. 
start off easy. So um, prove uh, minutes weekly, uh, from 2-22-2022. So I have a motion to approve these minutes. I'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve weekly warrants um, 028040. Do I have a motion I'll to approve these weekly warrants? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So uh, this is approving the executive session meeting minutes from 1-1-2015 through 1-31-2022 listed in the attachment A to be released. I'll make that that no. Okay, sorry, just to, so, sorry, my bad. Um, just to approve those, of that motion? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Now, to release or partially release so this is for us to, uh, I'll make a motion for us to, or I'll interstate a motion for us to release um, the executive mi session uh, minute, meeting minutes from 1115 through 131, 2022 with the redactions that we've made. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, this is um, allowing the Tuesday Club of Estonia in association with the Freetown Cultural Council to host the Strawberry Festival on June 19th, 2022, 11 a.m. through 4 p.m. at the Village Bandstand. Any? So I that's normal. Yeah, that's a, that's a this is a fun one. Anyone have any concerns or comments on that? I cannot think of any. No. All right, so I'll entertain a motion to approve this. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so. All right, so next we have the um, approve and sign the warrant for the 2022 annual town election for April 4th, 2022. Any questions on this? Have read the warrant. What's that? Do we have a warrant to search for? Yeah. Yep, it's in there. It's just to hold the election. Oh, it's it's the not the warrant. Okay. So I'll entertain a motion to approve the, the warrant. Motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, now kick it over to, well, I guess board and parts is still me, isn't it? We don't have anything on our board of health. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just briefly make, yep. uh, mention uh, the board of health. So we know. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this past week, in cooperation with the Lakeville Board of Health and Public Health Nurse and the Fire Department in Lakeville, we received a shipment of uh, COVID home test kits nice. to the Board of Health. We've distributed them for uh, Freetown residents to go and pick up. They're available at the Town Hall, Senior Center, both libraries, uh, transfer station, uh, police station and fire station. Uh, we ask that you pick up four per household. Uh, and we also made them available at the food pantry today for Freetown residents. And I heard that they were that was pretty successful too. So that's great to hear. Do you how many do we get in total? Do you know? We got about a thousand in total, just over a thousand. Wow. Uh, so thank you to our friends over Lake. Lake We've been trying hard to get them already been trying hard to get them here in Freetown. They weren't coming our way. Uh, but her efforts uh, along with Ed's efforts over there in Lakeville, they were ended up getting enough where they could share with their neighbors. So that's great. Thanks and to everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you see where it's going I'll be back. I don't know if I'll see you. <laughs> All right, great. So with that, so we're gonna move over to discussion on the beach, boat ramp, staffing, uh, oversight, surveillance, surveillance cameras, police, and our EPA details, power and Wi-Fi, and which system to utilize for payment for the parking at the boat ramp for the summer of 2022. All right, so I guess, Deb, you wanna maybe get us up to speed and kind I of- I will do my best. On where we stand um, here. You know, I wasn't here, but last summer, there was a lot of issues at the boat ramp and the beach um, required uh, a lot of police details people parking running businesses out of the boat ramp on the beach having um, cookouts drinking parking all over the place because they ran out of parking at the boat ramp and I, you know part of this I think is also related to COVID right because there wasn't a whole lot of activities people could do so they were boating more than than they have in the past um, the attendants down there trying to collect the fees, um, 
trying to keep order and and some of the patrons were getting a little feisty with the attendees down there. Uh, Luann had to go down there multiple times just about every single weekend to try to assist the attendants that were hired to work there. There was police details quite uh, almost every single weekend. Um, so quite a, an issue for the police department as well to always have these details. So we have been trying to work on this issue to see how what we can do to put in place to make it a better experience for everybody. The attendants don't have to feel threatened or, you know, going to work to do their job. So we reached out to the state to say, because that is a state boat ramp, can we make some changes? Can we increase the price of the sticker to help pay for these police details and attendees and, and whatnot? Also, can we put in some kind of pay app, either pay on your phone or a pay kiosk or whatnot? Um, and we did have a meeting, myself, Carl and Luann, Kevin, with um, Mr. Cameron from the state, and he, he, we had quite a lengthy uh, discussion, and he said, yeah, we could increase our fees to $10 per ticket. He would be okay in any kind of cash or system that we might propose. Um, I, think, I think those were the major things that we talked about. He was okay with us issuing parking tickets for those people that you know having somebody down there that could do that so we are here tonight just to continue these discussions to see how we can run the boat ramp and have it run smoothly um, for all involved I guess yeah so it looked like there was two different options for um, for the payment system so I don't know Lou I know you did some research on those is there any any input on what payment system you recommend or I think we went back and we revisited the kiosk option. Yes. Um, the board had previously approved using the pay on your phone one. Yeah. That would require us to put in infrastructure, electricity, um, Wi-Fi, um, have tablets for the attendants there to be able to look up who has and has not paid. But the parking kiosk, um, it's battery operated, doesn't need Wi-Fi, so it's kind of standalone. So it seemed like that might be a better option. And you know how much, I'm trying to remember. I think it was twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Got a revised quote from them. It's in the packet. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Actually, twelve thousand six hundred ninety. I'm trying to think if that's a ton of money for this, or if that's reasonable. I have to do some thinking on that. <laughs> well, and looking at ten ten dollars a car. Yeah. Yeah, and in looking at what we have in the account, I think there's roughly $40,000 currently in the account. Mm -hmm. So we have made some money in the past. I think we would, after that meeting, a recommendation to increase the fees to cover some and offset some of those increased costs. Uh, we can charge out of state more, uh, but keeping in mind that there may be an element of federal funding coming along that would then prevent that. Yeah. So some towns are doing it while they can and getting the out of state folks. We can't charge out of town as any differently. I think you folks already know that. Uh, there was a third option, if I'm not mistaken, uh, the non battery operated kiosk. Did that come? Oh, yeah. Well, the, the, the one that the state would provide. Yeah, the state would provide in the, in the immediacy, right? right. And mm -hmm. I think we talked about understanding how funding works, and I don't know whether it's already been allotted, but if this money has not been set aside and we need to spend it, uh, and depending on the work that goes along with it, our, there could be RFPs, there could be a bidding process, we may have to wait for financing on, on, the, on that side, uh, so we wouldn't be able to do that until after July 1, Yeah, which is halfway through the voting season. You know, Chief made a good point, and I, and I think a lot of us who are voters understand this. In the last two years, there are more votes out there than, than there are people sometimes. Yeah, I know it's hyperbole, but uh, at the end of the day, it's become a very, very attractive uh, recreational tool, uh, particularly during COVID. Now, the hope is, I think, from all of us voters out there, that some of these yahoos will trade their boats in and <laughs> maybe get an ATV and stay out of all the water. Um, but at the end of the day, we have to react to that. And um, I think what was born out of that conversation was a need for enforcement. I think that was echoed by all parties. Uh, and a need for you know steady enforcement and early on in the season uh, I think that can be established in a number of ways but uh, 
I went down there today to both the beach and the, and the uh, boat ramp again to see if there was anything I was missing. And, you know, there are a lot of signs. Some of them are uh, counterintuitive. Some of them, uh, uh, no parking signs three feet off the ground. So when a car parks or something parks or, or, or the type of parking, no trailers parking, or if one car parked in front of it now you can't see the sign. Yeah. You know, just little things like that that I think we can improve on the clarity of the signs. Uh, and, and I think some of them are really good. Uh, but I think we could be, you know, bigger the better, warning people. I think we've done a really good job down at the beach, Luann. I think with a lot of the signs that, that are down there, they, they're, they're straight up, you know. It's free town residents only, your car will be towed, uh, things like that. So uh, I think as a, as a boater myself, I think you go to use a facility and once you get there and you understand the rules and they're going to be enforced, you know that every time you go. I think the hope is now uh, that once the police and, and others got involved last year, a lot of that activity that was so worrisome to boaters and folks on the pond uh, started to subside at the end of the year. And I think the hope is if we can catch it early and, and do good with enforcement and signage uh, and, and doing it steadily, uh, that uh, we'll have a successful summer over there. Yeah. I really, I hope so. Yeah. I think I think one of the sort of the underlying issues too is who's really going to spearhead this, right? Last year it was the administrators, town administrators' office. So yeah, this brings back kind of agenda item eight. We talked that we kind of pushed here. Right. So that was a, what. It, so that's right. Exactly why I put that because yeah. it does become an issue. I mean, Luann had to go down there every weekend. I can tell you that that wasn't my idea. Uh, you know, if I'm here to be going to the boat ramp every weekend, kindly ask Cal, and he said that he would love to. George, you're not running, right? <laughs> Kevin said he'd be thrilled to do it. Um, no, that's so, a problem, right? So I guess part of it is, uh, I mean, what do, how do we, I mean, who's going to take charge of this boat ramp? How are we going to effectuate this? Because it is kind of unfair to have, I mean, it's fallen on our office, right? right. Um, mm -hmm. The administrative office to, to kind of do that. And it's a whole, you know, it can be a lot of work and just a lot of, especially in, generally it's on the weekends if you're looking for enforcement or, you know, and so then you're asking someone to, you know, that's just kind of unfair to everybody. But, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So it's, it's one of the issues. It's just a piece of this. So do we get some really good stuff in place? And uh, I think... The difficulties lies in even trying, particularly now, right? We all know how difficult it is to hire people. And what we're asking them to do is go out there for a number of hours, you know, whether it's great weather or inclement weather, on a weekend, so every weekend, uh, and basically sit under an umbrella. And thankfully, the wind, you know, make sure that they've got some shade, but they're in a little wooden shed. I went down there again today. No sanitary facilities, you know, other than a porta john, mm -hmm. which is then being used by all the, the folks that are coming and going through the boat ramp. Uh, you know, it's not an ideal setup for for uh, human occupation, if you will, <laughs> uh, which is why I think the when looking into having these re this remote kind of deal is it, I think it's an invaluable deal because at the end of the day, at minimum, we're not concerned for the health and welfare and safety of, of the folks that we put down there because uh, boat ramps and you can go all over the YouTube machine and you can find out they can be some a, a raucous place, especially if you get a couple people who don't know what they're doing. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, I've seen it. I've seen arguments. I've seen threats. Uh, it's a bit unfair to put uh, the folks down there and ask them to get in the middle of that. I understand that they're instructed to call 911 and all, but they, uh, in the past, they were accosted by people that they felt threatened, and their only recourse is to try to grab their cell phone and and we, we, we've had violence down there. Yeah, we have, right? I, you know, not to get too much into it, but we, yeah. we, we've had violence. And maybe not necessarily on the attendant, but certainly on other boat yeah. uh, ramp uh, users. So, uh, you know, and I think if we're going to put people down there, then uh, they need to be critically aware of, of what they're going to be dealing with, dealing with the public at any point in time. And let's face it, some people come back less sober. They rely on Captain Morgan to get them back rather than... You know, and, and, and that's where the problems are, I'm telling you. Yeah, you know, I've absolutely. seen it, I've done it enough to know that, you know, if, if four of a boat ramp on a, <laughs> try, try going to four of a boat ramp right after the 4th of July fireworks. Yeah, exactly. and, and, and I can tell you that uh, 
So at, at the end of the day, I, I, I think I like the idea of having where you don't necessarily have people down there. And if the enforcement could consist of whatever regular intervals, if, if, if police or somebody could go in there to, to, to ticket those that don't have, haven't paid or, or whatever. Uh, and, and then I can tell you this again, if it starts early in the season and we start ticketing those that aren't paying attention, word will get out yeah. that that's happening. It's no different than if you're not registering your motorcycles, you're riding out in the, in the state forest, you, everybody that rides motorcycles finds out when the EPOs are around. Yeah. Yeah. So I think with increased enforcement, uh, I've been to enough boat ramps to know that uh, it works. Yeah. So Kevin, you, I just want to clarify, you think that we should get the, the cashless system that the state is offering, which they have said to us, if we call them, they will give us, it's just a metal box yeah. basically yeah. that you put your money in. Right. And I don't know if you get a ticket or how that works. Yeah, well, I don't know the newer ones. I haven't used the one like that in a while, but basically it was, it was, uh, it was a little envelope and it was two part and you'd put your money and you fill out the information on it and you put it in the, the, the slot in this metal bin that's you know secure. And then you take the other half of that and hang it on your, on your rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. And so at minimum, and you, you, know, you put the date on, on that also. So at minimum, if somebody wanted to check, they could look at that. Now, can somebody jake the system? Sure. Mm -hmm. But whoever goes down there, and I don't know if it was the harbor master, I saw them down there, but, but somebody would have to go down there and empty the money. Again, so now there's another layer of, I don't want to say bureaucracy, but, but uh, re required uh, 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 attendance. Uh, attendance, right? Uh, but then they go in there and they check and they go, okay, I've got seven vehicles in the lot. I've only got three envelopes in here and they all happen to have white little things on them. Mm -hmm. right. So they're so, all from yesterday. But my, my point is, is if we have the money, then I would go with the, the best right now. Right, but, but, right. but if we don't, to do that, to start Angel. the enforcement of that and get people in used Angel, to this. Right. right. And, 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 but at the end of the day, let's face it, somebody shows up and they don't have a means of methods to make an electronic payment. I can't imagine this day and age, but it can happen. It's both cash and so it's trip. cash too, right? Yeah. So that's cash too. It's not just, so so you would yeah in the interim. It's just, it's just twelve grand. The dollar amount yeah. will outright in the fact that we're gonna have to go for an RFP on that, right? Because it's twelve thousand, right? It's over ten thousand dollars. Yeah, unless so, I can find something on the state contract, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so so you know we're going to get the funding. Hopefully, a town meeting we on wood, right? And yeah. Then we have then we have to pull up our and that but that. Cost will be offset by, you know, we want, we want to hire somebody or ha have oh, someone working as many hours to do that, right? Oh, absolutely. And you'll be able to pick up receipts during the week. Because yeah. right now you don't have an attended for every day of the week. Right. right. So the added benefit is we some the honest people that are using the boat ramp during the week mm -hmm. will pay the money, whereas now they don't. But I mean, I don't know that that's going to account for a whole lot of money. Um, but we still do need attendance on some level, right? To uh, if, as I think uh, Chief Abbott has said, to close the gate when the parking lot's full, mm -hmm. so people know. So we're still going to need an attendant now. I guess it's just they'll have less confrontations. Hopefully, right? right? Well, That's the hope. Well, right. Yep, Carlos. Can I speak? Yeah. Uh, Carlos Lopes, uh, Green Lane, Commercial Strong Committee. With, um, for this, the idea was once we get a system in place, right? We're going to have we're all going to have a body there, a person there, but. Put the system in place to take the cash transaction out of the equation, mm -hmm. right? Because that was either one, uh, not always making it to the coffers, or two, it was just, you know, people have been there and they go to that boat ramp over and over again. They got used to the system. My concern is by adding one system, which is the free one from the state, and then moving it over to a Wi Fi system, now we're changing it again, again, and again. If we're going to do it, let's do it right the first time and just add the infrastructure that we need. And just add the power, add the like almost like going with Plymouth. You get, you go there, you park, you gotta pay, you get used to it. Well, so, we want to, but I think this that's what we're talking about is the, the timing of it all. You might not so, be able to actually get this, the this, funding this, this, for the, for the top one, sure. which I agree with you, right? Yeah. Switching systems over mid season will be on you know not the best situation, but yeah, I think it, at this point we we'll have to get. No, right. you said for the future as well. It's you know it's one of those things. Enforcement. Last year, the police department and, and the chief would work with his officers. They did a great thing for us. They gave us a, a great right to go down there and be down there at all times. But it's not going to be like that for the rest of you know this whole full rank and beach experience. So by putting this infrastructure in place now, long term, 
you know, Wi-Fi, whether it's solar or whether it's electrical, whatever it is, you can put the surveillance cameras down there for enforcement. So now you can have a dispatcher here that sees it, dispatches an officer out versus having an officer strictly committed to that area at all times. So yeah. long term, the solution is technology. So whether we do it now or later, you know, small integrations, yes, but let's not go backwards either. Let's let's move, you know, if it takes some time to get the RFP out, let's get it out there and just see what we can do. Yeah. You know, I'm sure the state will pitch in as well. Well, I'll have Debbie look into that, see if she, if we can well, potentially get around. Did the state say that they would pay money for that? The, the state didn't say they would pitch in. Okay. They said that, I'm just saying, I can get it from the state contract. The state said that we could get reimbursed for work that we did. Like so, uh, we were and, talking and about that they would do some physical work, right? So there's right. going to be there's going to need physical improvements like, to the location. Like right? or something. They did talk about going down there and, and doing some work that uh, cleaning up the brush and things like that. Cleaning up the brush. There's drainage ditches on either side that need some maintenance. One of them's an historic herring run uh, that goes under Route 140. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, it eventually ends up in floods 140 during the floods we had, <laughs> but uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, yeah, I don't, I don't argue with the fact that we need to go forward, right? So right. Wi-Fi, whatever, electronic is the way to go. Uh, there's no, but yeah. if we're looking to capture some of that revenue and if we're looking to start some of that increased presence down there, um, that was the only thought. If not. We haven't had one there for years, since 94, since we took ownership. Mm -hmm. um, there may, in fact, be a need to do some, again, some physical work to the location for handicap accessibility, mm -hmm. you know, for the kiosks. Mm -hmm. We currently have two handicap uh, parking spaces down there for trailers, pulling uh, tr uh, vehicles with trailers. Um, and that's some of the computer science, too. Some of it says, well, for trailers only parking, and then there's others that the regulations say that you can have, well, uh, I'm sorry, cars with trailers, and then you can also have car park. So you can, you can do both. Mm -hmm. So I think just, you know, adding so some clarification yeah. on that signage, but uh, yeah, we, we can capture all that with unmanned people during, uh, unmanned during the week. You're right, you're gonna get those honest. I mean, another thing to consider too uh, would be to sell season that's passes. right. That was that came up in our conversation. Which is uh, what Swansea did. I remember one year I bought a season pass for Swansea. Uh, I'm trying to think. That I, what if? Because if the lot's full, the lot's full. Someone has a season pass. That you know, is that a potential issue? It. it I. Don't, I don't. I can't answer that question because yeah. that hasn't come up. Yeah. Um, it wouldn't be the first time. Um, I would equate it to. Several of us go to the White Mountains quite often, and when we go hiking, we, we buy a, the White Mountain National Forest yeah, sticker. Yeah, sometimes it's lots full. And you get to uh, you yeah, get to the parking lot, Diana's bath, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's full. That's true. So uh, it's something to consider, and I think it's a good point, Trevor. Uh, yeah. But at the end of the day, um, it's just something to consider. Mm -hmm. that, uh, well, I mean, it just seems administratively it might be easier. Right. Is well, to a certain degree, you one, know, you offer yeah. it, and I know that. Okay, I always looked at it as a decent deal. It's going to cost me six or seven bucks every time I'm going to park, or whatever it was at the mm -hmm. time. Uh, if I go down there ten times, I've yeah, you know. Um, but uh, again, that was quite some time ago. So something to think about that. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't think we're making any decisions tonight on this, right? I, I guess I guess for up. clarification purposes, yeah. right? I got invited for a reason here. Yeah, you know, well, also the, the next one too. We we need you for, which is uh, dumping at Porter Pasture. Right, but you didn't invite you invited me as the board of health agent okay. to speak to, about yeah. this. Yeah. So I guess for clarity, because I've heard uh, subcommittee, I've heard we're a member of a committee. I didn't know that this was a committee, and I didn't know I was on a committee. So okay. if I am, I haven't been sworn in yet. All right. Um, you are not. There's an open space representative that's on a, it's like a working group. Okay. That instead of the whole open space and rec committee being yeah. involved in this because sure. it was just becoming cumbersome, we had um, 
Chief Abbott, myself, and Carlos okay. represented that committee, and we just kind of like were do, trying to push things along and get things uh, organized. Uh, yeah, so that's what that I'm committee like, is talking confused, about. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and I get, and just historically, just to figure out how the Board of Health agent ended up with the, with the, any kind of say in, in this, mm -hmm. I mean, um, back in 94, the Board of Health agent was Paul Bourgeois. He was also the harbor master for this side of town. Mm -hmm. He lived over there by the boat ramp, and uh, they were looking to see if anybody was interested in doing it for a stipend. And he said, "Sure, I'll you know I'll, I'll do it." So, so that's how the Board of Health got involved in this. Quite yeah. honestly, I don't know that it should have anything to do with the Board of Health or the Board of Health agent. No, that's fair. If it ends up back in my lap, it ends up, I will absolutely take it up and do the best job that I can. That's not what I'm saying. But if there's going to be a discussion relative to Parks and Recreation or another committee overseeing this, I would uh, gladly step back and allow them to do their work. Yeah, no, I hear you. All right. And I, yeah, I think that is one of the questions, right? So that leads back to do we, what do we do with Parks and Recs? Do we, I mean, is it the Open Space Committee that wants to, this is, this is, this is, um, not necessarily something that I think a volunteer board can oversee because of the nature of it, right? Things come up in the middle and of the weekend and they're, you know. There is difficulties operating a, a volunteer board as someone who has been doing it for a little bit now um, when you really need a paid professional. Mm -hmm. They can have boots on the ground, they can be with a, a more, or an increased presence at town hall or within the right, community that has some reasonable authority uh, it is very, very difficult um, to get an all-volunteer board to sacrifice their personal time in exceedance of their commitment already to meetings and such to do something as difficult as, as, as this. Right. Uh, I think you should absolutely harness the enthusiasm of, of, of Carlos and, and, and the WAN and the chief and all involved with that. Uh, but I would just caution uh, that that we, we've gone through some growing pains and there is a need to have real professionals, uh, hired personnel that answer to somebody uh, and that uh, are responsible to the town uh, to do some of these jobs. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. So that leads us to, do we want to talk about what, you know, a seasonal parks and rec director might look, look at like? Yeah, I mean, I saw the, I saw the, the, um, you know, salary numbers for that. I didn't even look at the salary numbers. Um, it won't be cheap. No, I was thinking seasonal for the summer. Yeah, and I, and I agree that, that I think it will be difficult to find them. Fill that position potentially. And then, is there enough time? Is there enough work? I think, I think there probably is, but it have to be more broad than just mm -hmm. the boat ramp, you know, and the beach, and then we kind of, and then there's an overlap with the open space can you already have. Like, I think that maybe, it might be worth having a secondary meeting with the open space committee yeah. Yeah. to kind of talk about this and have a more in-depth discussion to figure out what we should do there. Because I think, I agree, I think there's something needs to be done. I just don't know what that answer is yet. Fair enough. Yeah, there's options out there that I think this discussion is a good way to go. Yeah. And then push it up to another meeting if needed. You know, there are things we can do, but uh, not this, not how we currently are situated or formed. It doesn't make sense. So. I hear you. All right, so I think that, you know, we'll have to follow up on that and kind of circle back and make a decision sooner, sooner than later. The boat season is approaching us quickly. Today was like 60-something degrees out. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. <laughs> One more week of skiing and then the season, that's it. I, I hear you. So I guess next we'll, we'll move on to agenda item 17, which is dumping um, at Porter Pasture. So you see the pictures. Um, I think, you know, really, I, if I remember correctly, where we ended this conversation last time is we were wondering why we can't just shut down Porter Pasture, right? Shut down the entrance make it accessible to only, you know, emergency vehicles. Um, and I just don't, I don't personally don't see the need for people to drive down there necessarily. And if you look at the impact that it's had on, on that property, it's disgusting. So, I mean, I think we have to talk, I mean, does, does anyone have a good reason why we shouldn't? I mean, I guess, if, what do so, you think, Kevin? Um, haven't been doing this for 23 years. I 
side, third both sides. Yeah. So we talked about it. We had a meeting several years ago to uh, just to understand, right? So the Conservation Commission, that is Conservation Commission owned property. Right? Correct. So it's controlled by conservation and the deed administration and yep. all those things. There's been a number of efforts down there over the years to try to limit access. We blocked off some of the paths. We uh, made sure we cleaned up the cemetery that's down there. We tried to get people uh, to go down there on a regular basis to pick up trash. Uh, we did talk about closing. It had to close for some time. And then when we do that, we have a certain group of individuals that will come up to us and lament the fact that they can no longer drive down there with their mom to watch the sunset. Mm -hmm. We tried closing off years ago. We were told by the Board of Selectmen, absolutely not. It's the only place where you can get, if you're any kind of handicapped accessible, or handicapped, or, or, or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, know, to know get down to, closer to the water where you can access it for fishing. Uh, we, years ago, tried to put stones up to prevent people from driving down on the beach. We were summarily told to remove the stones because we put them down there for some sort of political purpose. The fact of the matter is it's been a, it's been a punching bag down there. Mm -hmm. We finally uh, had it uh, surveyed and we bought placards to put up. We found that there's been some migration on both sides from property owners on the <laughs> side of it to come onto the property. Years ago, we tried to have it cleaned up. We could have bought a forester in there to uh, actually pay the town money. And that was thwarted by politics again. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why. Uh, so at the end of the day, uh, particularly when COVID hit, we chose to uh, keep it open for everybody because people were looking for things to do outside. Yeah. That, you know, so, that's not to discount the fact that we understand that there has been dumping down there. Over the years, there has been a lot of illicit activity down there. Yep. I say a lot. I've been doing it for I've, Con Con for 23 years, so a lot is, you know, a couple times a year you might, or once a year you might hear about the things that go on down there. I used to live right there. I saw a lot of illicit So you know, stuff. right, right, right? <laughs> no, um, and, and so uh, the idea was to try to get a gate put up down there. Of course, we didn't have the money in our budget. FinCom wouldn't give it to us, so I bought a gate out of my own pocket. That was prior to current FinCom uh, <laughs> chairman. So I'm saying that because we're just friends. No, no, it's because, it's because it's true. Okay, uh, and, and uh, so I went out bought one myself, and then we were going to put. We had no one open and close it years ago. Junior Resendiz used to do it. I think the police maybe Kyle can speak to that, but we we'll go down there in the morning, open up, go down in the evening, close it up. Uh, there's been some interest by some of the property owners, people that live in the neighborhood to do that, but uh, as we were cautioned at the time by town administration, selectmen, and council, it's, uh, we don't want to put people in a situation where they're trying to do enforcement on a volunteer basis uh, and with no liability coverage. They go down to their volunteering, uh, you, want it, you want it to protect those employees. Uh, let's face it, it's, it could be a similar situation, although we haven't had the violence down there. We get quite a bit of usage, particularly during the summertime. People love to go down there. We have beautiful blue crabs that are in our, our bay. If that's my phone, I'm going to apologize now. Um, so, is it? Is it? Is it mine? I'll tell you what. Oh yeah, it is the phone. Shoot. So uh, I apologize. No, no problem. It'll 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 eventually stop. Thanks. Um, um, so it's been it, it's been talked about a lot. So then we try to hire gatekeepers, but who wants to get a job where they have to be around for an hour in the morning, the hour in the afternoon? So we tried to hire multiple ones so you could, and and we had some interested parties, some didn't follow through, some I think we thunk it, and there's not a lot of money in it either. But it's a big commitment yeah. to a certain degree, right? You got to be there every day. Yeah. Right. Um, so. That's where I don't think we're opposed to having a gate there. I don't think we're opposed to keeping it safe for everybody to use. That's that's not it at all. Uh, I think just we were always conscientious of folks who have been in this town, lived in this town for an awful long time. Remember when that property had just been donated, and you know I, I hear people telling me about how when they were kids they would go down and they took they went swimming down there and they so I think. Uh, out of deference to some of those people, we, we tried to keep it open. Yeah. Um, but to your point, to your point. Yeah. Uh, as long as emergency vehicles would have access, 
And again, we went, we, we worked towards that, right? So we went out, we had a parking area made up front. Uh, we've made sure we've had porta johns down there. Uh, we tried to have trash collection down there, but that's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you leave a trash pile down there, people think that they could just stop leaving all kinds of trash there. If you don't, it's only those really bad people that leave trash. Yeah. Uh, the unfortunate part of it too is uh, we get a lot of debris that goes up from there uh, during storms mm -hmm. because it's tidal and it's very slow once it gets in there, gets up into the weeds and it doesn't come out. Years ago, I believe we had the uh, sheriff's department come down, but unfortunately the entire area is <coughs> loaded with poison ivy. So that was bad. Yeah. Needless to say. So, uh, no, I don't think that the Conservation Commission, not to speak for the entire board, would be opposed to doing that. But just keep in mind that there are some folks that would like, we'd ultimately like to see a plan to, uh, and we started talking about it. We've gotten forestry grants to do some sort of forestry management within there, uh, thanks to uh, Mike McHugh. He was appointed by the Conservation Commission to, uh, to be the liaison to do that, uh, a consultant. Uh, he's been very successful over the last several years for quite a few parcels here in town. Mm -hmm. So, no, I think at the end of the day, if uh, we have the funds available to get a gate to put up, I don't think that anybody is going to be uh, yelling loudly that we do, do it. Yeah, I see it. So, like, I think those are very fair points, and I, you know, I want people to, to access it 100%. I understand right. the handicap, you know. Yeah. But at the end of the day, like, weighing out what's happening right now, the big trucks going out there dumping tons of tons of stuff. And yeah, so so that happened uh, happened occasionally, right? Yeah. I, I mean, and I I will tell you that years ago we we didn't typically call the highway department. The conservation commissioners would get together and go down there and yeah. try and clean it up. Right? Yeah. Now we got a call the next morning by seven thirty, I believe it was cleaned up. Oh, really? So kudos to our highway department yeah. for getting out there, Chuck Nycumber and his guys. Yep. Uh, got out there and took care of it as they as they typically do with anything that we, we that's, ask. That's for. great to hear. But but to your point now you know and, and in fairness right we've had this conversation where it was brought to us that all these things were happening down there. Yeah. Gunshots to prostitution to uh, illicit drug use, uh, and and this is more of a public service announcement. But unfortunately, when I did my follow up as the chairman and I spoke to the police department, there were no calls from the area for any of this activity. Yeah. And so I would just, now that if we're on TV, we got a George is a resident down there, and goes so Gary, right? You see something, say something. Yeah. Right? I, it's, it's, and I don't mean just call the town hall. If there's illicit activity or stuff that's going on there that, that should, you know, that's what the police officers do, and that's what every one of them tell me. Call us, we'll go down there, we'll take a look at it. If it's something of concern, we will. You know? Um, but I've also had this... You know, complaints when we had it closed off. We have hunters, duck hunters that like to ask us for water, car top down there. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was closed off, and we thought, okay, you need to use half a lake. Well, if you're in a kayak or a small car top and you have to then paddle all that way, that's an extra long way. So, yeah. so but, but that doesn't outweigh the needs and concerns of the yeah. people in the neighborhood or the town and community well, as a whole. It's, I, it's an asset to us, it's a beautiful property. Right? Yeah. right down, and I would suggest that anybody go down there and catch a sunset because this is absolutely one of the most beautiful sunsets you are going to find. Yeah. And it's free, and it's right down the street. Yeah. So uh, if, if we have the funds available, if it's not in our budget, then I would hope that if we needed to go to the Fin Farm or if there's a way that the uh, building department or somebody that we could utilize the monies uh, you know, uh, appropriately through the budget, that we would do that, and we, and we could certainly install it. You know. I've installed chains before. I've put several of my own locks that I bought out of pocket and they get driven through. That's, right. That's what I keep cut. hearing is that. Well, yeah. they, right, more, so. More yeah. of like the, what they have, the geeks, the style that they have. Yeah, so I bought a. The C4. That's what I bought. The Big. tubular metal. Yep, yep. Yeah. Like yeah. Like and I bought stuff. one from uh, Tractor Supply and I told them, asked them to hold on to it till we need it. And that was probably a couple, few years ago now. And yeah. Because we didn't ever get a gatekeeper, there was no reason for me to go have this sitting around my house. Yeah. So I think it's still it may still be a track to supply. I certainly could reach out to them. But yes, that's that's exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Is that type uh, that would have e easy access to police and fire because mm -hmm. you don't want that. You know, you don't want to go down and we'll affect the rescue or water rescue or something. Exactly. So that same duck hunter go missing, and and there we are trying to carry a boat down. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, it's good. I, I just I think we have so, to go so, back to the public. So, if that. that's the case, then uh, <clears throat> if, if you'd like, then I will I will get with the highway department 
that jail request and ask if they can, at least we can get a chain or something down there. And in the meantime, we will look to see if we have enough money within our budget that would allow us to spend on that item and we'll order one up. We'll do it in consultation with the county. That'd district. be great. I appreciate that. Sure. All right. Jared. Yeah, I'd, I'd just like to point out that I went down there today with a trash bag and picked up a, a full bag like that. Yeah. Full of trash. Without even going to How, household trash bag? Yeah, just people don't have uh, to throw stuff out the window. <laughs> oh, um, a lot of beer cans and bottles, um, you know, Dunkin' Donuts cups, McDonald's cups, Isn't it Burger King bags. It's, it is absolutely amazing. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. It's oh, sad. Had, there was a uh, torn piece of women's underwear. Jeez. Um, That's scary. Uh, okay. Shoes, flip flops. Yeah. Um, down by the beach? Um, pretty far from the beach. Okay. Uh, I mean, in that area, yeah. but. Uh, not in a tidal area. Yeah, it's uh, it's sad uh, because it's cyclical too. Because we've had some while where it really wasn't bad, yeah. you know. And uh, we actually had some folks that would come from out of town to utilize it, fishermen and such, and and they would pick up the trash and and, and so. But then it just takes a few knuckleheads, yeah. and I don't know. Uh, I don't think it's. We used to have quite a few problems with the parking ride over there. Oh, you mm -hmm. said you lived over. Yeah. So oh, you the know. parking ride. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. So I, I think what's happened is, and, and this might be the case, is we're back in the cycle of people know where the parking ride is, but they also know they go right down the road and, yeah. and pull in there. And so I think maybe we do need to lock it up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's great. Thank you, guys. All right. And then we'll work about on what kind of structure we'll have. Yeah, yeah. Have. Uh, we'll get, like I said, if we have the money within our budget, if not, if it's something that we need to put on for a, a warrant article to do, I think that, that makes sense. Um, but it's just a shame, I'll just say it. It's just a shame that people just can't, you know. It's unbelievable. I, I don't understand it. I, I, I feel the same way. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Kevin. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yep. Okay, moving on. So we now have um, we're gonna, a continued public hearing from November 1st, 2021. So the original notice is notice hereby given that, uh, that a discussion on the transfer station hours of operation will be held by the Board of Selectmen. A hearing to consider the above will be held on November 1st, 2021 at 5 p.m. at the police station, station community room at 15 Memorial Drive in East Retail, Mass. Persons interested in commenting may appear at this public hearing. Uh, this hearing was continued to March 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m., which is now. So now the public hearing is reopened. And uh, we have results of uh, the surveys that we did, which I think Bola is going to pass out. We have in my file somewhere here. Yeah. All right, everyone have a copy? I guess I'll quickly go through the results. So first question, and you may correct me if I'm wrong, it's um, how often do you go to the transfer station? There was 218 total results, 64 um, individuals or 29% said once a week, 60 or 28% said once a month, 39 or 18% said every other month, 36 or 17% uh, once every six months, 15 or 7% said never, and 4 or 2% said no answer. So it looks like, you know, the once a week or once a month is the majority of folks. Um, do you have a transfer station, do you have a transfer station sticker? Yes was 82%, no was 37%. Two, no answers, interesting. <laughs> so um, moving on, so this is a little more Confusing, but the best days and times that meet your needs. So Tuesday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., that got 21% or 46 responses. Tuesday, 12 to 8, and Wednesday through Saturday, Wednesday and Saturday, 8 to 4, got 10 answers or 5%. Wednesday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Sunday, 
9 a.m. to 1 p.m., you got 61 or 28% of the results. Sunday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., got 12 or 6%. And then Thursday through Sunday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., got 66 or 30% of the votes. 23 did not answer, which is 11%. I guess I don't know how relevant the rest of these questions are, are to what we're really talking about here. Is that fair? I can go, you, if anyone has a question on those results, we can go through those. But So I think really what we're talking about here are the hours. So I guess would anyone would like to speak on you know their opinions on what we should do? I, right now, we're currently uh, have the Tuesday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Is that correct? Did I get that right? It's it, and then it's really to three thirty. Is the gate closed at three thirty, and four p.m. is when it's, it's all done. So yeah, if anyone wants to come up and state their name and, and uh, speak on it, please Can welcome to. So the microphone's up here. So it generally it's more helpful if you come up here. It's up to you. I guess I'm just here wondering what you guys thought were after the survey. Well, I can tell you from my chair that uh, it looks like 58% of the people that responded uh, would like either Wednesday through Sunday or Thursday through Sunday. So that over half the people that responded would like to see it open the full weekend. They were, yeah, there were actually a lot of people who didn't even know about the survey either. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wish we had a, more people respond. Mm -hmm. 218 seems like a relatively small amount of over 9,000 residents, mm -hmm. but yeah. I think you know, a lot of times a lot of this stuff you don't get a lot of responses. Well, yeah, so of course. Right. Yeah, actually, actually, we got more responses than I thought we were going. I was gonna say that's actually a good. I mean, you can only get a hundred people to come to town meeting. I know. When right. you think about that, right? So right. two hundred responses actually is good for a survey. Yeah, I can see that actually. Mm -hmm. I mean, what I, my takeaway from this is that over half the people that responded want the hours that we have now. Basically, they don't want to see a change. The hours that we have now? Well, no, so we don't have Sunday now. I think oh, that's. Oh, well, we stopped it. Yeah. We get used to me. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Got a little right. confused on that. Uh, so basically, my question would be are we here to serve the residents of Freetown? This is a service that people need and want. I, I really don't know why we would want to change what we've been doing all along that has worked. And uh, I think we should just go back to the way it was and leave it at that. And that's why I'm here. I mean, I'm a taxpayer. I use that faithfully for spring and fall cleanups and it affected my home. I can't get there. So um, went to the transfer station on Friday and we talked to them. So one of the other things we talked about was because, you know, basically, no one around does Saturday and Sunday. No towns really do. And here's my, here's my thought on that. And go ahead, go ahead. Okay. We had talked about possibly doing later hours mm -hmm. on certain dates, right? Mm -hmm. So that, to your point, because of your profession yep. and what you do in order to be able to fit your needs so that we can do things that we can try and appease mm -hmm. the masses. We're never going to, short of having that place open 24-7, we're never gonna be able to appease everyone, right? So it's how do we appease the masses as well as our faithful parents working. Well, I can answer that question. Leave things the way they were, there were no complaints. We start getting yeah. complaints when we close some books. Oh. And, and again, so what did happen? <laughs> we're gonna go back to the, the first thing. You get, well, George and Trevor and Lisa Pacheco put out a, a, a vacancy notice and the hours clearly stated Wednesday through Sunday to hire someone. At the time, that's what they were. Yep. Okay. So, I mean, what happened there? So, I think part of this issue is it's, it's a staffing situation, right? So, so if we if we can't find someone to work someday, you know, or if someone's not going to take this or continue working with us, if they're going to have to work on Sunday, then we're not going to be open at all. Jared's point. So, like you said, you can't go around everyone's schedule, but it sounds like you did go around one person's schedule against the taxpayers. Oh, more, more well, than one person's schedule. Right? Yeah. And, and okay. some people, I mean, and 
we have we had very little complaint about the change when it happened. Nobody really right. knew when it happened. I can tell you that. Like just from what I no, but I'm saying that, so if it was closed on Sunday and someone didn't call and complain to say, hey, you, you, why are you closed on Sunday? I need to go. I need to go. You have to hear very Same reason why they close the meetings. Right. Yeah, but Sunday yeah. was 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 a busy day, you know, and people utilized it. Uh, I, and I'm sorry. I, can, I I can completely relate to both sides. I'm and not, I get I get it. Like some people don't want to work Sundays. My husband doesn't want to work on Thanksgiving or Christmas, but he has to. It's his job. That's what he chose to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, and, and as the board, you're the hiring board. I, I totally, I, what I'm, my concern is literally not being able to get anyone to work on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's that's like going to be the, the, well, the problem. So, no, when we don't have an employee, then we'll have to close until we get one. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that, mean, that's, that, that's, the, that's what I right. can see happening. I mean, we're, we're going to move ahead and just close on certain days because somebody doesn't want to work that, those days. I mean, we're projecting. You know, we should go with what we have. And if people well, leave and we want to rehire, and we can't rehire because of that, well, we can address it then. You know? Yeah. And it looks like the night hour, 10 people said they would do the night hour one on here. <laughs> the Tuesday, 12 to 8. I mean, not, not being able to get staffing has been used as an excuse now for numerous times, which sometimes. I'm really not applicable. Yeah. Like I said, I'm only doing this because my house is affected and I don't have a place to put it. Mm -hmm. My leaves and my brush, I just don't have a backyard. Mm -hmm. right. Thank you. I'll make a motion to leave the hours as they were. So what, what, I, we have to be very specific on what those hours, so what they were before. Wednesday through Sunday. First of all, we shouldn't we be asking if anyone else has anything else? Sure. Yeah, does anyone else have anything before this is? Yeah. Uh, Tim McIntosh, uh, former executive assistant, as it says in the minutes for the eleven one meeting. I just wanted to correct the record a little bit. This kind of the minutes kind of reflected that I was part of the decision making for making. This decision, which frankly I, I thought was a terrible decision right from the get go, uh, so I was not in favor of it. Okay. The manager just kind of reflected, and I just want to get on record Clarify. saying that. Just a little clarification. Yeah, absolutely. We, your opinion is to keep it open the hours that we've always had. Yes, I thought Tradition. it was a ridiculous idea to change the hours in the first place. Yeah. Expand it, which was the discussion was originally to expand the hours, and then suddenly it became contract the hours, or not it, to kind of move them around. Yeah, to, so. I think and I think that this might have bought, mo, uh, changed since that la that last mm -hmm. when we spoke about those minutes. I think that there was another negotiation between the former town administrator mm -hmm. and the, and the folks down there. I think that's what that's just to make be that right. make that clear as well. Yeah, I think the, the discussion started off in the very you know the very beginning stages, trying to open it basically Tuesday through Sunday, close one day, and then it came. It, it basically, sh everything got shifted around and we ended up losing hours yeah. that were accessible for residents. I hear you. And it looks like in these minutes, I'm not sure if that was June of 22nd, 21, it said there was a discussion, a discussion that Sundays were not very busy for the transfer station staff. Mm -hmm. I was gone by then, so I can't speak to that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I do remember that, that coming up, that it wasn't, it wasn't that busy compared to Saturday. I do remember something along those lines. Well, maybe and fewer maybe people use it on Sunday. I, I don't have a count. But the people that do use it on Sundays need it on Sundays. And it is a service that the town provides for and resident why, taxpayers. And that's why I, my thought was, is listen, Patty, I, I used to go to the transfer station on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. understand. But I'm saying that my thought was, well, then what about doing something for a later hours, so that way people who are working. And I get that too. I get that too. So I can. But it was so I'm last the, I'm the type of person that wants to try to, to appease everyone. Yeah, I understand you can't opposed do. to that, saying the lighting and this and that. I'm like. We had talked about when we were there. We had talked about doing it daylight saving time to daylight saving time. 
because of the lighting issue, right? Because at this time of year, we're trying to keep the place open till seven o'clock at night. Wouldn't make any sense. But right you know, on a Wednesday afternoon, after work, you think after I come home from work, which I'm retired, but Last I don't year. think I would want to go to the transfer station after five o'clock in the dark. But it won't be dark, and that's the point. Well, that's why we're saying that. And, and but also, still, so no, that's the last thing I want to do when I come home from work. You know, especially if I'm a commuter and I'm driving home from Boston or from Australia. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I have a quick a question for the board. The hours now are currently Tuesday through Saturday? Tuesday, yeah, eight to four. Okay. How, if it's a question of Sunday not being profitable, how profitable is Tuesday? I asked that question last time. I didn't get an answer. I don't know that answer. It's not a question of, and I was just going to say, it's, it's right, no. is that really what it's about? Is it's not a problem. If we're training Tuesday for Sunday, I get that too. People are available to, to bring stuff up there on Saturday, but yeah. not on Tuesday because it's a match. Except the proposal is, is not to trade Tuesday for Sunday, but to trade Tuesday and Wednesday for Sunday. So I, I, what I would suggest is maybe a half day on Wednesday and a half day on Thursday. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday be full days. <coughs> we had suggested to the board to do Tuesday on Saturday, extended hours from four to six. Are they being right now? Yeah, thank you. You might want to come up here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Yeah, Victoria King, Transfer Station Supervisor. We had suggested to the board to do extended hours Tuesday and Saturday from four to six. From April till October, that gives you 31 weeks of leaf and brush collection. And the, as far as the Tuesday go, yes, it is busy. And people have adapted to the Tuesday, Saturday schedule. I mean, I'm there every day, I think I would know. And, uh, I mean, as far as Sundays, you folks all like to have a day off during the weekend. And it doesn't matter if you took a job and you, oh, you knew you had to work both weekends. You know, it's unfortunate. But if you had your business, you run a business. But and what if somebody couldn't, excuse me, you had your chance. It's that's my turn to talk. Mm -hmm. You had a business. Mm -hmm. Someone, oh, I need a haircut on a Sunday. You're not open on Sundays, right? Right? Right. Okay. So if they kept pressuring you, pressuring you, and... You know, what if they were kept, oh, I want to go, you know, I want you open. It is unfortunate. Things change. And no, I'm not done. And other communities, they're not open on Sundays. And as far as Dartmouth being open, that's run by waste management. And people have to pay to throw away their yard's waste. We don't even charge. Brush is an expenditure, $20,000 we spent last year, mm -hmm. and we didn't make a dime off of it. Mm -hmm. So I pay my taxes. Yeah, so, uh, I, I'm not saying you don't pay your taxes. So here's the difference between your business and mine, okay? I chose to work in the town. Yeah. You chose to work for the town, okay? That's a big difference, yeah, first is. of all. Okay, guys, all right, let's, I mean, let's, let's, let's I mean, see if we get it is what it is. first yeah. note, so let's play. Yeah, we have come please. to a- Please, one at a time, please. Yep. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so both of you. Yeah, so- It is a difference. All right, so I think, you know, I understand your perspective. I think I understand everyone's perspective here. I think it's a difficult yeah, situation. Um, I mean, are, are we ready to set hours right now? I, I mean, I just. Well, I, I would like it to see it go back to what it was. And what and so can we speak about exactly what it was before? I don't have before those. Before it was Thursday, Thursday through Sunday. That's 36 hours. Yeah. According to our union contract, we're contracted for 40 hours a week. So why aren't you working 40? We are. Oh. Tuesday through Saturday is 40. Oh, 40. Okay. Yep. No, but that doesn't have anything the other, to do with Yeah, but the, that other schedule, that was it was only a 36-hour schedule. Well, I mean, that's easy enough to change. If the union contract calls for 40, yeah. you should be getting paid for 40. Yeah. Do a half day on Wednesday. Excuse me? If you do a half day on Wednesday, so 
Well, I wonder how much is it entertained if there's any more public comments. How would you feel about a compromise? Every every other and then week guys can would be a different uh, yeah. schedule. Okay. So it'll be Sunday. That would be confusing to the residents. More comments if they have. Then they wouldn't know when we're open, when we're closed. Right. Then it's phone calls and text messages and emails. Well, I would suggest uh, we try it for two, three months and see what happens. Put it right on the sign out there. And if there was extended hours on Saturday and Tuesday, could you make those hours? Depending on what the hours are. I mean, you're talking to my husband. He's, he's the one who does it all. Right. I, I mean, mean what, could, could you make those hours from, that's till six, well, we were talking 11 to seven on Tuesday, or... Um, what do you do half the day Sunday? Eight so on, uh, eight on um, six o'clock on Saturday night. But well, it's on Saturday night. Night. Up Sunday morning. But it's during daylight savings time. We were going to stagger staff if that works yes. for you guys. It's really not that actively busy with rush. It doesn't pick up till like right around spring April. April. Right? Well, yeah. I think it's, it's, it's not just October. rush. I mean, rush is one issue. But it's, it's oh, people do want to get there and they can't yeah. get there yeah. after work, unfortunately. Yeah. But they're not here, so. <laughs> so obviously it's not an issue at Chosen. Well, people don't like to sit up in front of the camera. <laughs> and ninety percent of people don't even know this is going on. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it wasn't meant to be personal. It's just again, I mean, it's no, no work. I mean, it's so that's why I'm just at those extended hours. If that would work for so your family. Yeah. So I guess so. This is how. So if anyone does anyone else want to speak at the public hearing? If not, I'm going to close the public hearing, and then we're going to discuss. You know, what we'll do for it. It comes with a decision here. Anyone else? Yes. Can I speak? I'm not a resident of the town. Um, I won't tell you where I grew up, but that town, the Sunday was the busiest day. Plymouth is the busiest day on Sunday. That's the only day I go to, to the landfill. Yep. Um, so I've heard a couple times other towns aren't doing it. Yes, they are. Uh, that Those are the busiest times is Saturday and Sunday because of people that um, that's the, the, the time that I load up my dog and he wants to go for a ride and I go to the dump on Sundays and I don't know how many vehicles I see doing the exact same thing I don't know how it is here but Plymouth the busiest day is Sunday and in Duxbury the busiest day was Sunday that's they call it the Duxbury Mall you know, they go there and they trade, that's they pick cool. up tables. I mean, that's the, that's the big thing uh, during the weekend. Okay, all right, thank you. So with that, so, um, Kevin? Yeah, Kevin Kamaris, ATV Spoken Street. I'm just wondering, is it a function of just not having enough staff? Yes, I, mean, I think that's- hire more staff to put on a rotational basis uh, to give some of these, as someone who used to work in the medical profession, understanding every other weekend, plus reserves on the third weekend, your wife working the second shift, it's opposite yours. I get where folks would like to, and I and, and I, I do it. Okay. Right, right. So you guys, it happens, and I think the idea half day on, on Sunday at least gives some measure to somebody might be able to actually go to a birthday party or what have you on that Sunday afternoon. I just don't know if there there isn't a way that you can hire enough staff that you can be on a rotating schedule. Uh, what we had discussed a few months back was getting some per diems. Did we ever do anything with that? Did you know? Right there. Oh. This is your per diem person. Oh, mm -hmm. we, yeah. have, we have per diem. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Oh. Okay, so with that, so everyone, everyone all set? So um, I'll, do I have to take a motion to close the public hearing? Okay, good. Do I have to make a motion? I'll issue a motion to close the public hearing. <laughs> motion made. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so now, agenda item 19 is discussion of vote and transfer station hours. So it's a tough, sticky situation. Uh, any suggestions from the board here? Well, I, I think I'd like to have the weekends open. Um, 
we might be able to rotate people through so that everybody doesn't have to work every Sunday. Is I guess is that possible, Vicky? Like, can we work people through so that someone's not you know? I have to talk it over with them. Yeah. I don't I do think that it makes sense to have Sunday open for at least half day. Yeah. I really do think that. I mean, I, I understand. It's just, I'm thinking about personally, I, I would go to the dump on Sunday myself. I agree with that. I, I do under, also understand that everyone. Down there. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I get it. I mean, I mean, we're here to take care of the residents of Freetown. Yeah. That's the service they need, and that's what they should have. So if, if we were to accomplish that, right, because right now it's Tuesday through Saturday, if we were to make Tuesday a half day and Sunday a half day, no? No. Get a lot of head shaking over there. <laughs> you said extended hours. Yeah. So we usually are open from 8 till 4. Yes. So we would stay from 4 to 6. Not any increase in the payroll because whoever would cover that four to six would take time off the next day, which would probably be a Wednesday, which is a Tuesday. And then when you do the Saturday, that person that worked at the extended hours would have the Tuesday off. I think I'm confused now. So she's talking about Sunday. Yeah, so, but I think what, what you're mentioning is Sunday just is not, and I think that the board, we're leaning towards having Sundays open at least half day. I mean, that, that seems to be the consensus. Well, can I ask you something? There are three people there. Can the, the transfer station operate for a few hours with just one person? So that you could rotate Sunday? I did it for three years by myself. Okay. So, so that answers that question. Oh, I'm sorry. But I know the public here in Spokane. I don't mean to object, but I worked down there. I uh, filled in and folks were hurt when I went back work for the building department. It's not a place that you can effectively work by yourself. Yep. Uh, you could be in the motor and take care of something. People come in and will dump stuff and take off. Uh, it's also not safe. You're doing a lot of manhandling of things down there. You have one employee down there. And I'm not trying to be overprotective, but we did have an instance when we had an individual from the highway department uh, who was down there by themselves mowing, and there was an incident. And because the radio didn't work, we didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Uh, Makes sense. Uh, yeah, and I'm not trying to poo poo that plan, George. Uh, it's just that uh, I've also, when I work there, and hopefully things are better, I don't know. I, I, I have, I'm not up there. A lot, but um, you can run into angry customers. You know, we're a lot of disadvantages to how we do things up there in general. You know, charging people by the load, having to guess at how much things weigh, or, and it's not fair to the employee, and they end up feeling the wrath and hearing it from from the residents, of course, or the angry customers. So, uh, as far as keeping somebody on the regular there by themselves, I, I think we just would that would give me pause for concern. Yeah. Well, we have th three employees. Uh, per diem works how many days a week? One. Just one. Would you be willing to work two? He has a full time job. He has a full time job. Oh, okay. Well, you know, I, I, I don't know when this was granted about a few years ago, several years ago now, when I was filling in. I might have been before Vicky was down there, actually. That you know, there's a certain amount of employees at the highway department. I don't want to speak for them. I understand the view, and I understand all that. But there was an idea that could you rotate some staff there through, and then give them another day off during the week on a rotational basis for coverage and, and all, because most of them are equipment operators. Now they're not going to know the intricacies. They're not going to know it like Vicky and, and you're like Tom. But that was brought up relative to having staffing shortage back in the day. Right. Well. I think what I would suggest is that uh, we plan to go ahead with changing the hours, but let's wait till we can come up with a plan and uh, see exactly what we're going to need. Do we need another person? 
another per diem maybe or part timer or, but uh, yeah, that makes sense to me. I I feel like you know should we get this this vote on this on this next agenda to mm -hmm. actually I don't want to just make a decision right now that isn't fair for everyone just because I feel like I have to make a decision. So. And then, well, we, we do have to make figure this out short, like soon. I think if we can hire somebody else, and I, I really do think Sundays should be open for ha at least half days, and if we can work that in, I, I agree. Just with just three, just three employees there right now, right? Total, there are two and two. I think that that needs to be addressed first. Okay, but I, we're we're gonna get to a Sunday half day at some point soon, <laughs> so we'll figure that out. Okay, so I think that's it, though, right? Okay, with that, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Nope, nope, nope. Oops, sorry, what? What did I miss? Where's my... Oh, yep, sorry, we can adjourn. Oh, Debbie? Skip him right over there. I lost my address. I've had a long day, folks. Very long day. Okay, I don't have a lot anyways. Um, the, uh, just a couple of things. The parking issue at the town hall, as we all know, is an issue. Um... We talked about possibly to the right of the town hall now where some employees do park, um, uh, possibly looking at asphalting that to make it better to park because it's muddy and it's mucky. and Like in between the schoolhouse and the yeah. town hall? Yeah. There's a concrete pad there now, Jeff. Yeah. Um, that would have to come out and then asphalt would go in. Um, so that's just something to be thinking about that might help some of the parking. Yeah, just for everyone's, we have, what, 18, eight, yeah, 18, 18 spots. parking spots and 24 yes. employees. So that right, just, yeah. map doesn't work. So well. the employees have been, I've been, a couple of us parking on the street, a couple of us parking uh, to the right of the building. Um, the fire chief has let uh, some staff park to the left of the fire station one. Um, employees have been parking at the bandstand as well. Which that's problematic in its own way, right? Yeah, I, that's so where that's, I have to park when yeah, I go in there. Yeah. And I don't think I should be parking yeah, there. Yeah, crossing that is like playing Frogger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so, just, um, it really is. It is that a big corner issue. corner scary. Yeah. And we've had, uh, we had an incident where an employee almost did get hit. So it is an issue for us, but we are all parking to make space for the residents. And actually, I will say, it seems like there is open space the last week that we're parking it all over the place to try to accommodate that. Uh, the uh, radio communication challenges for the public safety. We are looking into leasing some space on two new, on two different towers that would give us, and once we install our equipment, the radio situation should work much better. Are these existing towers that are already built? Yeah, so we just have to put up, I don't know what I'm talking about here, but some kind of receivers or something that maybe right. yeah so there would be one that would go on an existing power that we used to pull off of before we put the equipment here and then another one on the east side of town right. so that would give us extremely good coverage throughout the town based on the studies that they did and what we would cover so right well, to go back to the parking space too oh go ahead yeah. sorry george i didn't jump on that quick enough uh but uh, we, you've spoken about possibly putting maybe half a dozen parking spaces around or behind the library, if that could be graveled. We don't own any land no, behind it. That's Mary the Brown. problem. Can we speak to? I can speak to the we, person we who owns it. We've also talked about yeah. it being a liability that I don't really think is a good idea for the town to be trying to use someone else's private property. George, I don't think you, you, want, you might have missed the last meeting, but one of the things we discussed was where Grandpa's is, the convenience store. You know, they have a bunch of spots there that line park. See if we could go uh, and potentially rent some parks. You know, you could probably get six to eight spots right there, and I think that might take care of all our problems. So, you know, so be good. Yeah. just a little walk. They're willing to walk with us. We'll say that. They got some other stuff I need to go through, but they yeah. are willing to walk with us. So I think that makes sense. And then, you know. So we're working on that. A couple different options we're gonna, yeah. gonna kick the tires on. <laughs> so the radio, the other thing with the radio communications, we, we had some presentation uh, for these, remember the old Nextels? They're similar, but oh, yeah. they're AT&T push to talk phone units. So we had a presentation on those this week. Um, 
that seem to have coverage throughout the town mm -hmm. and we are going to get some demos for nothing and try we i ordered eight of them i'm going to give uh, so many to the police department so many to the fire department some to the highway department and see how those work if it works it will be a good i think short term uh, solution to the communication issues very expensive long-term solution so um, probably not a good long-term solution okay. the grant applications I just applied for a grant with the shared streets grant to do the crosswalk between the elementary school and the Fenway Park with a, a nice crosswalk and a beacon because we know children are crossing there and if you've ever been down there when this game's going on it can be very chaotic and it's a concern of mine I also applied for an equipment only grant that would give the, um, the highway uh, a little machine to plow the walk uh, the sidewalks because he for like here the for sidewalks everywhere. for the center of town it's called oh, yeah. the man it, it was pretty bad this yeah at this past yeah well. that makes sense um, and also some speed feedback signs and like a, a trailer with a sign on it, a light up sign. So if we had an emergency, the chief could put up a message saying, you know, road closed due to this. Also, you know, you know those blinking signs that says you're going too fast? Yes. Yeah, he would have those. <laughs> so those. I put in an application for those two grants. I don't know if we will receive them. Um, and then the COA subcommittee and library committee plans, they did meet and vote to work together for uh, one combined building for both the COA and the, the library. Um, so you may, th those at some point we may be disbanding the COA subcommittee. So you, is, does it look like it's moving in that direction? It is mo moving in that direction as of today. I will okay. tell you there's a little bit of... That's uh, going to be interesting because you know the money's already been Right. Voted on and set aside, so that's going to have to be. So that would be on. reallocated at town meeting. You'd have to go to the town's people and say that that there's a new option, and would they be willing to reallocate it to the new building, which would be a combined building? Okay. Right now, they need to go back to the building committee really mm -hmm. and start to think about what they're doing there. Yeah. So I just I think that's all I have for updates. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Julie. All right. So I think with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion is, sir. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody.